Thank you for joining us for another episode of Talk Talks, sponsored by Photographer Entrepreneurs Association. And if you haven't had a chance to check out the association, go to photographerentrepreneur.com to learn more about photography business resources, templates, training, and support. We'll see you over there. All right, welcome. We are here again with another interview. We're really excited today. We have with us Melissa Welsh. So hi, Melissa. Hey, hey guys. How's it going? Great, good, great. Good. So glad that you're able to join us. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. I'm stoked to be here. Excellent, yeah. excellent. So um, I want to give a little introduction of who Melissa is for those who don't know who she is. And then we're going to dive in and ask her some questions and get to know a little bit about her and her business. Um, so Melissa Welsh is a national award-winning photographer, author, and tech entrepreneur from Vancouver Island, Canada. She studied photography in college and then built a career in lifestyle portrait and weddings. She is a fun, free-spirited individual with a deep love for adventure. Her work can be found in private collections around the world, as well as in regional, national, and international publications. So welcome, wow, Melissa. Welcome. <laughs> nice. Hey. Ooh, excellent, excellent. So we're really excited to learn a little bit more about you. Can you tell us a little bit about you, your business, your expertise, and, and maybe something that people don't know about you in your business? Sure. Well, um, I'll try to, gosh, I feel like there's so many things that I could talk about. I've been in the industry in one form or another for almost, like, honestly, it's been over 20 years now, which is, like, hard for me to say because I'm not that old. <laughs> at least I like to think so. Uh, so I started, um, I started uh, with an interest in photography when I was 15 years old. Um, I was like that camera dork that took pictures for the yearbook and that sort of thing. Went on to get a diploma in photographic arts. Um, I started my business a couple years later, and I guess that was in 2005. I started my business full time. I actually wrote a business plan and like did all my cash flow projections and like all kinds of, I see the look of Yeah, I was like, not, like that's not too common. <laughs> <laughs> like, who does that? Um, I didn't know, though. I was so naive and determined. Like, I was really determined to be a photographer. Um, so, yeah. And then, um, I guess, a funny thing is when, um, I don't know, for anybody out there that may have gone to school for photography, um, becoming a wedding photographer is, like, the least desirable thing. Like, weddings are not cool. So... I did not want to be a wedding photographer. I wanted to be an adventure photographer. So I wanted to go hiking and sailing and mountain climbing and all those sorts of things. It takes those photos. Um, but uh, I think I mentioned I was a little naive and didn't realize that there's not that many people that make a proper full-time income um, in that area of the business. Um, so before I knew it, I became a wedding photographer by accident, but all of my friends were getting married and, you know, as that happens, um, I guess it was probably, honestly, it was pretty recently, like maybe even four or five years ago where I sat down and I thought to myself, like, I wonder if it would impact my business if I actually admitted to being a wedding photographer, because I never used to tell anybody. Um, I was like, I wonder if I owned it, would I see a different level of success? So yeah, about four or five years ago, I started saying I was a wedding photographer. So so I think I might be a wedding photographer. <laughs> Confessions of a wedding photographer. <laughs> it's funny I don't know I, how this happened to me. <laughs> it's funny, I didn't, I didn't think about that other photographers would go through that, especially when you're formally trained, because it, it's something that, um, it's fun. I have, I have like a really close friend of mine that is a world-class DJ, mm -hmm. and he had like the same thing. He was like, I don't want anybody to know, but I need to make some more money, and I'm thinking about getting into weddings, but I don't want anybody to know then I'm going to get into weddings because like it would mess his reputation up type thing, you know, totally. um, so that was really a battle in your mind for a while. It totally was. And you know what? The thing is in hindsight, when I was coming out of college, the wedding, wedding industry was a little bit different than it is today. Like for those of you that have been around for a long time, there was a big shift in the style of wedding photography going back 15 or 20 years ago. Right. Like it went from mostly being fairly formal, oh, yeah. you know, to the introduction of like, like the idea of lifestyle, you know, in a what you know, like all the candid kind of stuff. And so I was lucky to have graduated in that time. And I guess just being young and the truth is, is that I actually really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And you can actually as a wedding photographer today, and we all know this, 
you can be so creative and it's not, um, it's not the same that it was 20 years ago. So, um, was I in school 20 years ago? Yeah. So, um, so it's different now. So it's, a, it's cool to be a wedding photographer now. I just want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's in. Cool. Now. I just decided right here. Okay. Yeah. It's official now. It's official. <laughs> yeah, totally. Stop the presses. <laughs> yeah. So it's awesome. So throughout your um, you know, progress um and your whole journey as as an entrepreneur and, and yeah. in the business of photography, you probably have encountered a lot of challenges. So can yeah. you share with us maybe one of the biggest challenges you've had to face in your business and how you ever overcame that? Sure. Um so so it's funny because I just declared myself as a wedding photographer. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, is that um, that was probably about 80% of my business, like 70 to 80% of my business. And then the rest of it, I was still always attempting to like tap into that commercial photography adventure world. So my number one challenge, like when I look back on my career has always been pricing. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I really struggled with early on, especially because I had my foot in both worlds, was understanding how like the methods for pricing could be so different, like within the same industry. Right. Mm -hmm. And so as a student, like not just in college, but even when I got out and started working, like I was always trying to gather information and there seemed to be such a tremendous amount of inconsistency, you know, through our entire industry. Um, and I never, like, I would say like, honestly, right up until a couple of years ago, I never felt confident with my pricing, mm -hmm. like never. And, and like when you are like, so for a number of years, I was the only um, income earner in my family. My husband was in school. We had a six month old baby and it was just me. Right. Like, and talk about the pressure being on. It was one thing to be a photographer in my twenties. And if I didn't make any money, I could sleep in my car or whatever, you know, <laughs> but now I was like a real life grown up with a mortgage and responsibilities. And, um, the issue with pricing, like I knew I had to figure it out, you know, like it was just like that thing sitting in the, and like every year I would like tinker with things and then I would go a whole year with that pricing strategy to see like, did I make any more money? Nope. You know, it was just like year after year, my income would fluctuate like a couple thousand dollars. And I was like, it was a really crappy place to be in for somebody that has been in the industry for as long as I have, but it was like getting close to that place where I had to make a decision. Like I'm a grown up now. I need to figure out how to make some proper money. Like I can't raise a family making $30,000 a year anymore. You know, like that's fine when you're single and whatever. Um, but it's not okay anymore. So, um, so yeah, that was, uh, that was like, I think like an ongoing, um, theme challenge in my career, um, think, right up until a couple of years ago. Yeah. I think that's an ongoing challenge for a lot of photographers. Cause you know, a lot of them are accidental entrepreneurs as well. They got in and all of a sudden they, you know, they find themselves, you know, on a weekend or something. So they're like, oh, can you photograph this for me? Oh, I'll give you 25 bucks, 50 bucks. And they're like, oh, I can make money at this. Yeah. And, or they're the person that's like, oh my goodness, I can't believe how much wedding photographers make. I'm going to come in and undercut them and blah, blah, blah you know, and, and they don't realize how, you know, big of a mistake that was later on. But it, it just takes them like a month and a half to crank out <laughs> a job, right? It was like, I know. Oh, so, so it's, but I think they go through that same thing. Cause I, I remember, you know, there's that scarcity mentality. I think a lot of people have when they're new in business, but uh, very rare does other industries go in and they're like, okay, Hey, I'm going to be a high end pizza establishment. So, you know, they don't go in day one. So I'm going to offer free pizza or, or $1 pizzas hoping that they're going to be selling a $40 pie. You know. You're just going to attract everybody that actually wants to, yeah, uh, spend a lot of money on something. <laughs> how, did, how did you finally, I mean, I know it's a working, it's a work in progress, but how did you get to that point where you were kind of able to get over that and get to where you are now with, with pricing? Well, I hit rock bottom. Mm. Like that was what happened. And so like, I sort of like, like I managed to get by for a long time doing what I was doing and making things up, copying other photographers prices. Mm -hmm. You know, like I used to do the thing where I would like look at people's prices and if their work was a bit better than mine, then I would price myself lower. Mm -hmm. But if their work wasn't quite as good as mine, then I'd price myself higher. And I, 
I never considered whether either one of those photographers were making any money, right. you know? And it's um, one of those things like, and I see this all the time on Facebook that people always ask for pricing information and tons of people will give it, but nobody right. talks about how much money they're actually bringing home with their family. Right? right. And so I was in that situation where I was taking advice from all sorts of people and just like throwing something together and like <laughs> hoping it sticks. <laughs> and um, I, okay. So in 2014, I moved, um, I took over a commercial studio. So I went from being a primarily wedding and portrait photographer and I became a commercial photographer. I had the formal training and I was up for a challenge. So I took over a studio that had been in business for 30 years, mm -hmm. uh, 1600 square foot right downtown Victoria, BC. And he was the rich guy's photographer. So well-established business. So I took that over in 2014. In 2015, I had my second baby and uh, Novet I had to keep working though, cause you gotta keep the lights on. Um, in November of that year, I ran my numbers and I realized I wasn't gonna bring a dollar home to my family that year. Mm -hmm. Wow. So like every single dollar that I, I had, was working harder than I ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and every single dollar that I earned, I paid out to somebody else. Wow. Um, so, you know, I was like in this place where it would have been easy to like blame other people or blame the industry or blame the guy that sold me the business or like all those sorts of things. But I instead asked myself some tough questions and I was basically like, maybe I suck as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. you know, like maybe it's just a complete fluke that I managed to get by making that 30 grand a year, every year consistently. Right. And like now taking over this company is just like unveiling the fact that I actually suck. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a good photographer, but I'm not a good businesswoman. Right. Um, so I had to decide what I was going to do. It was either going to be to close up or double down. And so yeah. I doubled down and I dove into my numbers like mm -hmm. I never had before. And it, it was, um, I was honest with myself that I knew I didn't know my numbers. I was making things up. I was still doing it the way that I'd been doing it for 10 years where I was like, just trying to figure out what I should charge for things. And so I just had this conversation with myself where I was like, Melissa, you have to be able to figure this out. It's math. Like you're good at math, you can figure this out. And so, um, so that's what I did was I built myself a system starting at how much money I needed to bring home to my family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I worked myself all the way down to um, how much to charge for each one of my products and my services. And so in that following year, I took my sales revenue from $48,000 to $117,000. Wow. So that, um, that was my rock bottom. And boom! <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm onto something here. So that's real. I'm so glad that you talk about this openly and transparent because there's so many times that all of us sit down and we're like, I really suck at this. Like I'm, I'm just really awful at this. And, and we all just, you know, really hard on ourselves, but you were able to kind of take that moment and just get real with yourself. And I think it's a lot of times we, we put these blinders on and, you know, kind of pretend everything's okay. And you, you yeah. took them off and you got real. And yeah. because of that, you were able to really just shift the direction of your entire business. I mean, you had to. I know I became an entrepreneur is what happened. So for all those years, like now in hindsight, it's like, I ran my business like a photographer mm -hmm. all those years you know, as a creative living in this beautiful, you know, dream life, you know, right. and on, on social media, it looks amazing. My pictures are fantastic. Everyone's jealous, you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> like a photographer and, and I had to grow up, you know, like that's kind of, you know, in hindsight, when I look back, it was like, that was that moment where I had to grow up and it was like, um, I got to take this more seriously. So. Yeah, that, I mean, we, we've been seeing it, especially over the last several years, you have people that are like grand champions and like win these incredible awards on the artistic end. Yeah. Wiley, they're closing up shops everywhere. And it's, it's that delicate balance that we're definitely in that age of the entrepreneur where, you know, we have an oversaturated market these days. The point of entry to get into this world is so much yeah. easier than it was 20 years ago. Exactly. You get to know all your settings and the risks weren't there because you only had so many frames you could take at a wedding. Yes, so exactly. you, you know, you're worried more on like, is the, I know the ISO and the aperture needs to be at this setting for this type yeah. of light. 
because I only have a hundred speed film inside my camera. <laughs> you know, exactly. you weren't going crazy with lighting and posing and everything. So, I mean, the world definitely has evolved and changed. So it, it's great that you adapt it. And, and I think a lot of it, I think a lot of people can relate that, you know, some of us do go through a pivot and you hit that bottom, whatever it is in our lives. Yeah. And that really is when you strip away all the excuses and everything. So it's, it's great that, because some people that's their pivot and then they, they get out of those industries, yeah. those businesses. Yeah. Um, but we call it positive pressure. Like you, yeah. you hit it and you know that double down moment going yeah. forward, you gotta, you have to run it smart. Like yeah. you, you're there to support your family, not, not to Facebook likes and Instagram, you know, is, is cool, but it yeah. doesn't, it, Facebook has not directly made a, a payment in our lives anywhere. No. You know, it's what we've done with it, but it's something that they, we, we don't receive paychecks from them. So <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's it's great. True. Yeah. Good, good. So um, I want to sh uh, shift gears and talk a little bit about marketing because um, you have some um, interesting perspectives too on marketing and I'd love for you to share some of your best marketing strategies that you've used and you've helped people with um, for, for marketing wise. Sure. Um, well, I've got kind of a cool one to share with you guys that is fairly recent and it actually came out of that rock bottom place that I was in. Um, so one of the other things that I was wrestling with at that time, so you have to imagine I'm in a new town, right? So I moved my family here uh, from the mountains and um, where I had like a fairly well-established wedding business. And I had to, I just had my second baby, so I didn't shoot a lot of weddings. I had to ask myself, am I going to continue to sh to photograph weddings? You know, like I know a lot of people do it for a long time and then they get out when they have kids because of schedule and life. And I was like, maybe I'm out, you know, maybe this is the time that I'm out. Um, and, but I was like, if I decide to stay in, I got to do something different and I got to do something that nobody else is doing. Cause there are a lot of extremely talented photographers everywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but especially here on the Island, um, many that I res had a lot of respect for. So I was like, if I'm going to compete with these guys, I got to do something different. So um, I'm actually giving, I'm giving talks on this specifically. So I'm going to see if I can somehow summarize it so that I'm not talking for the next hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So what I did, um, when I tell people this, I let them know that I was in a place that I could afford to take some risks because I was extremely confident in my ability to produce a wedding consistently. Right. So, um, so that year, what I did is I offered free wedding coverage. And so when I was at the wedding trade show booth, I had a big sign free coverage, which got everybody coming my way. <laughs> so the deal was, is that, um, that I would photograph your wedding for free from the time you put your dress on until you sat for dinner between the months of September and June. Okay. <laughs> sort of off season right. uh, July and August you still had to pay um, it was like a $2,000 fee for the coverage in those months but the rest of the year it was free um, and um, so that was really okay so, so then what I did was I separated my um, I don't know if this is marketing or if I'm starting to get into pricing strategy no it's okay oh, it's, it's, part, it's part of it because that's marketing for sure it's like who is this lady uh -huh. mm -hmm. it's free. Oh, and you get to see your wedding photos the next day. And they're like, what? So this is one of the things that I teach is competing on value instead of price. Right? So when I was in this place where I was getting real with myself, I also sat down to think about what are my strengths as a photographer? What can I do that nobody else does? So I'm lucky enough that I started shooting film. My first weddings were film. Like I was, I came into the industry in that transition, right? It was, I graduated in 2002, started my bit. So 2002 to 05, I was shooting film. So I shoot tight, right? Like I only shoot maybe 900 photos at a wedding. So the other thing that I tapped into, or when I was like thinking about the whole process, I was like, I'm most excited about a wedding right after I shoot it. If I have, do you guys shoot weddings? I don't know. We, we, yeah, we, okay. we have, and we've been transitioning ourselves. Okay. Um. <laughs> so you guys might be able to relate to this too, yeah. but I'm most excited about a wedding right after I shoot it. Mm -hmm. If I have to edit that wedding three months from now, I'm like, oh my God, like the family photos are killing me. Like, <laughs> I can't handle these. I'm you so see those gestures. I know. <laughs> <laughs> from me. <laughs> I'm so over it, right? I'm most excited about my work right after I create it. 
So what if I tapped into that energy and I edit it? Because the thing is like with, like now that you have a, like I have a family, if I'm going to work a Saturday, it's kind of ruins my Sunday. When I go into the weekend, it's like the whole thing's a, a write off because Sunday I'm going to be exhausted. So why don't I just work the whole weekend? Mm -hmm. So I shoot the wedding on Saturday. I go home. I edit everything that night, wake up in the morning, complete the edit, design two albums, and then we have a reveal party at two o'clock. Mm -hmm. So that, so this is my spin to these clients is the free, what I'm offering them is the, the free wedding coverage and you get to see your photos the next day. And so the other thing I wanted to experiment with was the idea of in-person sales with weddings. And one of the big questions that I, that I was asking myself is, you know, because photography is a concept sale, right? There's so many people that come into the business or you hear it all the time, like, I don't want to be a salesperson. I hate sales. And it's like, well, you're trying to sell something that doesn't exist, right? <laughs> like, you're trying to do it up front. So you better be a good salesperson or be prepared to learn something about sales if you ever hope to make a living, right? Mm -hmm. So one of my thoughts was, um, sorry if I'm taking too long. No, no. It's good <laughs> so one of my, I'll wrap this up quick. One of my thoughts was, uh, would it be easier to sell people their wedding photos after they were created? Would people understand the value of that product more once the day was over? Mm -hmm. So instead of trying to sell this 20 something year old groom, a $3,000 wedding album six months before his wedding, what, like, would he be able to connect? I just got goosebumps thinking about it. Would he be able to connect with that product easier the day after? Mm -hmm. um, and so anyway, uh, long story, sort of long. Uh, the answer was yes. And, um, I've sold, um, since I implemented that in my business, I, my wedding album sales are at hundred percent. Wow. So every single client has ended up buying that album the next day. And I took my wedding sales. Um, I know I'm not telling the whole story here, but I don't have time. I took my wedding sales from an average price of 3000 to, um, a minimum price of 6,000 to 10,000. And that's where I'm sitting today. So, um, I know that's a wild, crazy story, but like, it's just sort of some, sometimes you can get out of the box and try something new and it just goes, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Cause I know, yeah. I know that a lot of photographers are going to have a hard time wrapping their head around what you just <laughs> <Yeah>. said. Right. <laughs> cause, Cause I'm all about pricing. I'm a pricing geek and also looking at things outside the box as well. So yeah. you were able to take it. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that one of their concerns would be is yeah. what if these people don't buy it? Like, are you interviewing? Are you, kind of making sure you understand that this is somebody that's your ideal client versus somebody running up to you saying they have the backyard wedding. They only put $3,000 out of their pocket for the whole thing. Well, so here, this is, that's a really good question. Cause this is something I actually asked myself at one point, because the yeah. first people that um, I went through this process with, right? Like the in-person sales day after sell the artist choice wedding album. Right is I was like, well, they're just eloping-ish. Like there was six people at their wedding. Like they're not going to spend as much money as somebody with a big old. So that was my initial thought. But then I corrected my thinking and I stopped myself for like from projecting what I thought. And I was like, wait a minute, a wedding is a wedding and a wedding to this couple is no less, it's not less valuable to them right. than it is a couple that, you know, spends $10,000 on their wedding, like, why wouldn't they want a beautiful $6,000 wedding album, you know? Right. So I checked that good, um, good. to see, and they bought it. Oh, you know? And I was like, you know, now, now having said that, I should, now I give my clients the opportunity to pay it off as long as it takes them, okay? Mm -hmm. So they're gonna spend $6,000. Nobody has $6,000 today, right. um, but, if it's something that they really want, can they pay it? You know, do they have $6,000 free over the course of the next two years? Absolutely. So a hundred percent of my clients pay it off in increments over the course of a couple of years. Um, but anyway, it was a good lesson because that's the type of stuff that was always in my head. Right? Yeah. These guys aren't going to spend any money. Um, but I was wrong. No, well, it's good that you're wrong. And it's good. You even still went after it and did it mm -hmm. to even prove yourself because I think a lot of us, come up with all those what ifs before we leap and try something new and different. We exactly. psych ourselves out and we yeah. stop ourselves from breaking away from the crowd. Can I tell you something else cool I did too? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I separated my digital file collection. This is scandalous. 
So my clients, you can't just buy the entire digital collection anymore. You can only, I only offer the candids, okay? Because that's one of the questions that comes up at the booth, right? Um, so what about the digital files? And it's like, well, I offer a candid collection of digital files, but I reserve the right to the formals, okay? And the way that I explain it is the formals, so the candids are like, you know, all the things, the getting ready, the ceremony, all the stuff that's really important. Mm -hmm. But the formals, I reserve the right um, because that's my artwork. Okay, so the formals are the beautiful photos of the two of you on the beach and the veil blowing in the wind. Like, I want to take the time to make sure that those are absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. So those photos, you have access to those digital files once you've purchased that image in print. So whether it's in the album yeah. or whether it's a wall portrait. So yeah. at the wedding show, that's good enough for them. Mm -hmm. uh, come the sales session the day after the wedding, and they've seen everything. And like I said, I'm, I'm confident enough in my work that I knew they were going to, they're not going to leave without their wedding photos. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so to leverage them into the album that they really wanted, I showed them two. One was the um, classic album, one image per page mm -hmm. and like 30 images. And then the other one was the artist's choice with unlimited pages in the whole entire wedding album, wedding. And then, so I used those formal digital files to help leverage them into the album. So right. if they bought that album today, they would get the entire collection of digital files. Nice. That's brilliant. Check. Done. Yeah. That's yeah. brilliant. Yep. Just brilliant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the mic. Drop the mic. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, I hope I explained it well enough. I know there's like lots of, whenever I, I've only, um, this is the first time I've actually told it. I've just had like one-on-one -on -one conversations with people. Uh oh, we have, we have top secret we information have exclusive here. information here. This is awesome. <laughs> No, I'm giving a program in Richmond, British Columbia in May um, on it, a full program where I walk people through a little in more detail about yeah. what I actually did. But there's kind of the, it's something to get people talking anyway. Love it. Yeah, yeah. Love it. But I mean, it's so exciting because again, I, I think we're in a Me Too society. So everybody just sees what everybody else is doing. They're like, oh, this is what I have to do. Yeah. And then it might not work for them. So to have yeah. to know that we all want to get to a certain end point, but there yeah. could be several different roads to get there. Exactly. And I think everybody just keeps traveling down the road that they see the most. And even exactly. if it's not how they are. And making assumptions, like adapting the, the assumptions they've heard. Like the one I hear all the time is millennials don't want albums. And it's like, you're wrong. Yeah. You know, like you're just not communicating the value of those albums to those millennials. Mm -hmm. Like nobody gets it. Nobody understands it beforehand. You know, they just... I'm sorry, I get goosebumps. <laughs> um, but it's our job as photographers to be able to communicate the value of these products. And yes, right now, an empty wedding album before the weddings even happen is hard to wrap your head around spending the money. Mm -hmm. But when you look at it the day after and 10 years, 20 years, you know, it's one of the most valuable possessions a family is going to have, you know, and everybody deserves to have one. I really think that. So, yeah, I just, I just love this whole process because you definitely are taking control because apparently they're, through your process, you must be educating these people because our, our wedding clients are jumping on an airplane the next morning going to a honeymoon. Yeah. So, and they're expecting to see, you know, files after they get back. But on your end, you're grabbing the, the, the peak emotional state, the family's at a peak emotional state. It all just happened. You yeah. know, you have the prime moment that, that you're, you're getting people and for them to be able to even enjoy them first person, firsthand. So yeah. you're probably having these people purposely, you're setting it up and be as a professional. Yeah. They know that they're going to start the honeymoon after they see their wedding images is, yeah. is how I, you know, I'm assuming, yeah. uh, but you're pre-framing them and you're setting the stage for them, which, which exactly. is which is great and you know what i should just say too is that i have done a couple where they haven't been they haven't been able to come in the next day mm -hmm. so i have had a couple go on a honeymoon and then come back in the day after the honeymoon or whatever it is so it's it's not that it absolutely has to be that next day uh, just for anybody out there thinking <laughs> all right everybody like, Why? Like, we'll do it. i have so. to say that but, but be, it's one thing behind the scenes because we outsource some of our editing and yeah. we find that some people that do take the three months it's really the the time to get to the images versus the actual act of editing. Because mm -hmm. if yeah. you just deep work it, get rid of all the distractions and go through yeah. it, 
you yeah. can get it done technically in the time frame. Yeah. You know, but but it's like life happens and it gets pushed over here and we prioritize other things. Yeah. And like you said, the further away, because she even knows it, if I don't go in and call those images immediately and, yeah. and start, like it's it's like so hard to like reel exactly. back in. Work, yes. work, you guys. It is. It goes from being the best and the most exciting to like, uh, you right. know? And like <laughs> I think I've never like timed myself, but I think I must work more efficiently when I'm excited. Yeah. Oh, Anything? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Then okay. when I'm like dragging my butt and not excited at all about looking at these photos, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think from a business standpoint, cause time is money. Like I think it makes sense too to just get it done like yeah. right away where you're just, you know? Um, but anyway, Totally, totally. Yeah. And just like what you're doing, you, you dedicate that weekend. So you already put the schedule in for me, uh, Melissa put, yeah. cause I used to, you know, again, I would, it would be the getting around to it. So my schedule would be all over the place. Yeah. And like the Monday after wedding, she obligates awesome. the time for me. And that's yeah. why so we get our return. Lock it off the next day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like Sunday, I've been like Saturday night, I'm like, <laughs> dork it out. And then Sunday morning, I, I did have an assistant I brought in to help. Um, on the Sunday morning, get things. I would do the wedding, the layout, and she would do the final, you know, calling and stuff like that. So I didn't, it wasn't a total one woman show. I did have it. Yeah, that's great. That's yeah. great. Can I just ask one other question about, yeah. about your process, if you're okay talking about it, is yeah. that do you just have the bride and groom at this meeting or do you open to family members? I like open moms it to the family. And so sometimes, so we always say we max it at 10 in case there's like the bride uh, or the maid of honor wants to come or anything like that. Um, so, but we've, it's mostly just sometimes the parents come often the couple come by themselves. Sometimes we've had parents that have come. So, oh, that's, that's yeah. Good. That's good. Great. yeah. Awesome. So you've already given like a bazillion pieces of <laughs> advice, <laughs> um, but is there any advice that you would give, um, to a photographer that's just starting out in their business? Sure. I think, um, so if you're just starting out, I guess like one of the things I think about is, um, is that to learn the, learn as much as you can about the business as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. I feel like your craft takes time to develop. You know, there's like time associated with developing your craft. You got to get out and just keep shooting and keep shooting. You know, that's one, another piece of advice. Keep shooting. Yeah. Um, but with a business, it's like, you can implement that stuff right away and it makes a difference. So the sooner you know the things you need to know about running a photography business, um, the sooner you'll see success, right? And I think so many photographers, and I get it, totally get so wrapped up in the creative process and they're obsessing about their style and, you know, am I light and airy or dark and moody? I don't know, you know, like these are the things that are like racking their brains. And it's like, at the end of the day, that stuff, it doesn't matter. You know? <laughs> like if you're trying to make a go of it, it's the business stuff. And the thing is, um, a lot of it you just got to learn once and implement and away you go. Right. So, um, so I would say that. And then my other little thing I would say too, is that um, when you're going to conferences and things like that, this is something that I realized a couple of years ago. At first when I used to go to conferences, I'd always used to go and see whoever was like cool, you know, like who's, who's like doing like super cool stuff. Um, but then at some point I realized like, I should be studying from the people that have been doing this forever. Mm -hmm. They have secrets. Like I know that there's people that have been in the business a couple of years and they're really cool and they're creating like really cool photos and stuff like that. But what I want to be learning is how to run a business for the next 30 years, mm -hmm. you know, how to pay my mortgage, how to put my kids through school, you know, like how to ride the wave of economic times, like ups and downs and that kind of thing. And I feel like there's a generation of photographers um, like the more established older generation of photographers, there is so much wisdom out there. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like the younger, there's a disconnect between the younger and the older. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think there's a ton of wisdom there, you know, that, that, um, so yeah. So when you go to conferences, look for the old guys, <laughs> the old gals, you know, they go and sit and listen and learn and, try to get them out for a beer or a glass of wine. Cause I think that that's like really where you get the stuff that's going to, um, yeah. Help you with your system. I love that. I, I, love, I that. love that. Cause Mel Melissa's newer to photography the last mm -hmm. several years. Yeah. And the one thing that I've learned is exactly that, that the, 
the real masters that have like stood the test of time and actually have created really profitable businesses long term. Yeah. They might not necessarily be the the cool whiz bang thing right this second, but the 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 manufacturers a lot of times on the exhibit hall floors like they know these people and they know who they are and they bring them into their booths and it's like there's like nobody else in the booth. Like yeah. you can have like a free one-on-one -on -one set and these guys love, you know, women love to talk, cool. you know, because, you know, they, they're, they really did it, you yeah. know, over the long period of time. Exactly. They're not just there like selling a whiz bang product type thing. And that's really where they're making money. They're not really yeah. making money in their photography world. Yeah. So it's just something that I think it's so overlooked because you can walk by some yeah. trade show booze and it's like, oh my goodness, do you know who that is? Yeah. And there's like nobody yeah. there. And you can go like actually talk and have a real in-depth conversation. Yeah. And they would probably love it just as much. They do. And the thing is, is that in my experience anyway, I don't know, I've just um, always had a thing for like yeah, like learning the real lessons about this industry. And I've always had an interest in the history. And like, I love hearing the stories of, um, you know, like the 99 cent print, you know, like when everybody thought professional photography was over, you know, and that's like, it's actually good to hear these stories knowing that this little digital revolution thing, it's just like a little bump in the road, you know, we're all going to be fine, you guys. <laughs> 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 we're going to be okay. <laughs> anyway. Love it. Love it. So I have a fun question for you and it's kind of relevant because you kind of went through this. So if you were to relocate to a new area and yeah. no one knew who you were and you had a thousand dollars in your business bank account, what would you do with that money to market yourself? Um, so, so I've actually moved my business probably four times in my career. So my advice um, has been tested and um, it's networking. Mm -hmm. It's not Facebook ads. It's not doing a model call, you know, or any of those other things like join the chamber of commerce, join the local business association, whatever it is and get out and go to every meeting, you know, like I would take the majority of that thousand dollars, right? Save a little bit for a rainy day. Um, but the, it would all be an association dues and like going out for coffees and beers with people or whatever you got to do. Um, and the reason is, is that so you've heard the thing people do business with people they know and like right mm -hmm. people get to know each other faster in person than they do on social media it mm -hmm. is possible on social media absolutely mm -hmm. but the time it takes is so much longer to build relationships online than it is face to face yeah. you know um you know we can sit down for 25 minutes and have a tea and feel like we're buddies yep right. you know? Whereas, you know, if we were just sending one-liners back over social media for a period of time, it could take six months before I felt, you know, like, like we knew each other well. So yeah. it's the same thing in that business uh, to client relationship. And I think, um, I know it's totally old school, but I think it's new school. So I, just I love it. But I, I think it. it's like, it's like, seriously, everybody's on social media, you guys, mm -hmm. everybody's on Instagram, everybody's on Facebook go out and see people face to face and you might be really surprised at how quickly your business takes off. Yeah. That, that's awesome. You're, you're talking our language. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're big proponents of the, we're all about going from high tech back to high touch yep. again. Yep. The, totally. The saying is like, as, as we get more Jetsons, we have to get more Flintstones. So it's kind of good. Yes, down. totally. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I, and like, I've always sort of tried to pay attention to what everybody else is doing and then run the other way. Oh, yeah. You Come know, on. like, the path less traveled. Exactly. Exactly. Um, exactly. It's exactly. so much more fun too when you carve your own path. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, do you do something on a regular basis, or do you have a success ritual that you think contributes to your success? Um. Yes, I do now. So, remember those ten years when I ran my business like a photographer? Not so much. Um, but a couple of years ago, when I made that switch to running my business like an entrepreneur, there were two things. They're kind of connected that had made a huge change or like had a big effect, I guess. Um, so I don't know, have you guys heard of MITs or you know what those are? Most important tasks? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so every day I sit down and I write down my three MITs for the day. The things that I absolutely 100% have to get done that day. The crazy thing is, 
is I always do it. There's something about the exercise of writing them down and they're sitting on the desk. Like as soon as like a notification pops up and you're like, oh, shiny, my Facebook, you know, and like 25 minutes goes by and I'm like, what am I? Oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing right now. So that has been huge. Um, the other thing that is sort of kind of connected to that, it's not so much on a daily basis, but it's on a weekly basis. So every Monday morning, I implemented this two years ago, that year that I doubled my income. And um, I purposely took a half an hour each week to step outside of my business. So you know how we can get in our business and we're doing this head down. Um, so I took a moment to step outside of my business and connect with the big picture. So I went through this exercise. It was like a 10 step exercise or is, because I still do it um, now a 10 step, step exercise where I go through things like, um, what is the big picture for my business, right? Mm -hmm. Who do I want to be in this town? How do I want people to refer me? You know, how do I or refer to me as, you know, like what kind of words do I want them to use? Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, celebrate last week, you know, so what happened that was awesome last week? Um, what kind of challenges did I have last week? Or in other words, what did I screw up? And then more importantly, how do we make sure that doesn't happen again, right? Um, so anyway, blah, blah, blah. So I go through this exercise and I really feel like that, that had a huge effect on keeping me focused. And I think as creative people, especially there's so many other things that we would rather be doing. Like we would rather be working on the latest cool photo we took, you know, and you could spend two hours in Photoshop or you get caught up on Facebook and like, before you know it, an hour of your work day goes by, like you need to be making money right now. Yeah. Um, so I find I found just just that connection with the big picture helped me. Um, well, it certainly helped me make it make it happen. The focus on my business has been like this compared to this. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. And do you use any specific business uh, resources, tools, or photography tools in your in your business that you can't live without? Okay. Well, the first one that comes to mind. I don't know if this is okay, but it's Pixel Sense, which is the software that I created. <laughs> and I was thinking about it before, and I was like, I can't see that. But because you know, but the truth is, is that so okay, so I created that pricing formula or pricing method I talked mm -hmm. to you guys about at the beginning of um, our show. And then um, I started helping other photographers with their pricing too. One of the things that I didn't dive into um, earlier was that not only did I create a pricing method, but I actually changed the way we price our photos. Mm -hmm. So instead of marking up our costs by four, which has kind of been like an old standard way of doing things, mm -hmm. I introduced the idea of placing a value on our intellectual property. Mm -hmm. So I developed a formula, the Pixel Sense formula, um, to help photographers place a value on their intellectual property. And I'm sort of suggesting that the industry consider this as a way forward. Mm -hmm. um, so in, because you always hear that thing about how the value, the value isn't in the paper, right? You try to teach new photographers that people are buying the paper, they're buying your image. Mm -hmm. Yet as an industry, we've always marked up the paper, yeah, right? To get prices, which is, you know, those two things don't work together. Um, so I created a formula um, and basically built this brand new pricing method from the ground up based on um, being compensated for my intellectual property. Mm -hmm. The idea being that when you're starting out, your photos are going to be worthless. Not worthless. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worth They're fine. Less. <laughs> <laughs> worth less than they are. Like for myself, who's been in business full time now for 12 years, like my photos should be more valuable. Mm -hmm. And then maybe for you guys, if you've been in the industry longer, than, then maybe your photos are worth a little bit more, you know, because we all know that's the way it is, you know? Right. Um, so I started helping other photographers. I've been presenting the information for a number of years in my local area. People have called it brilliant. I'm not just making it up. It's for real. They've said that. And uh, so that made me think that maybe I needed to take this to the next level. So I developed a piece of software. And... So this concept, getting back to your question about it being a business resource, I feel like Pixel Sense and this method of pricing has like solidified the foundation of my business. Mm -hmm. You know, like all those years I was learning all that stuff and I never felt confident. You know, like at the end of the day, like I would get a call for this job, that job, that job, and I was always questioning and second guessing, 
how to price my photos. And um, I feel like, especially in the last couple of years, like I have this rock solid foundation. Like I am 100% confident pricing any job now. I know exactly what I need to charge for my time, my intellectual property, like all of it. Like, so for the first time in my entire career, um, I feel good about that. And like that, that comes out when you communicate your prices to your clients and when you're trying to get a job and you're on the phone trying to explain your value. Like, I know I didn't make any of these numbers up. This is what I have to, you know, get paid to do this job. So I know that it's my thing. So I'm sorry for, <laughs> for being pricing sense. But I did think of one other one too, <laughs> quickly, is studio management software changed my life. Mm. As a scatterbrain photographer, I don't even know how I did it before. I was like, had papers and Excel spreadsheets and all that kind of thing. And probably five or six years ago, I started using studio management software and I was like, and now I have no idea how I ran my business before. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. That's awesome. so, and what I would say too, is that the thing about studio management software is that you've got to do it almost before you need it, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. once you're so busy that you need it, you don't have the time to set it up, right? So I would say... If you're just on the cusp where you're starting to think about it, do it now. Yeah. Because another year from now, you'll be just drowning in everything and you're going to end up having to pay somebody to set it up for you or something. So that's what I would say. That's solid advice. That's yeah. really, really solid advice. Yeah. <laughs> so last but not least, what are you working on now and how can people get in touch with you? Well, um, I guess the big thing that I'm working on now is Pixel Sense. Yeah, yeah. sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, um, I had to make a crazy decision last year about whether or not to renew my lease in that commercial photography uh, business that I was running. And um, I decided to sell the business and then um, and focus on this because um, if this was ever going to be a thing, the time was now. And I know that there's so many people out there that struggle with, like, I know I'm not the only one. Oh, yeah. um, so, so I'm mostly focused on this right now and then still continuing to shoot weddings and adventure portraits and that sort of thing. And um, I'm speaking in Richmond this year. Um, and I don't know where else right now, but Rich, uh, Canadian Imaging. Um, I'm speaking at the national convention there. So really excited to present pixel sense there. And I guess if people want to get in touch with me, they can find me at pixelsense.com um, or melissawalshphotography.com as well. Great. too. Excellent. And we'll make sure that we uh, list all your, your connections uh, on, on the show. That would show. be awesome. Absolutely. This has been really yeah, awesome. Just, great. I mean, you just have, your energy is really contagious. And I'm like, so after I want to re-listen to this again, because you just gave so much information mm. and just, gave a, a lot a lot of things for people to think about and looking at yeah. things differently and differentiate themselves differently so thank yeah. you so so much no problem my pleasure i hope i didn't overwhelm anybody oh my gosh yeah, that no. was awesome i'd say i'd say if if anything out of all this the one thing i want everybody to really pick up on because it's the one thing as melissa talked about the energy side it was really the passion mm -hmm. they have behind what you're talking about it's cool. not like kind of like yeah this is what i do it's like you could tell like you live it and it's part of who you are yeah. and yeah. part of your essence and that it's always incredible to talk to people that that actually it's you know it's just it's not a job it's it's just this energy that's around it which is really exciting yeah, yeah. cool yeah. thanks for that paul well, thank you so much for joining us and um we're, we're excited to have you on and we're really excited to see what goes on this year for you because you have a lot of good adventures to come yeah. <laughs> i do thank you so much guys it was a pleasure thank you. thanks again mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Talk Talks, sponsored by Photographer Entrepreneurs Association. And if you haven't had a chance to check out the association, go to photographerentrepreneur.com to learn more about photography business resources, templates, training, and support. We'll see you over there.